Uh, but we return first to matters Middle East and matters specifically Israeli. And um, and we speak to Sophia Orr, an 18-year-old Israeli woman who has just been released from prison um, where she was incarcerated because she's one of only three people in Israel, three young people in Israel, to have publicly refused to serve in the IDF since that October the 7th terror attack on Israeli soil by Hamas. Uh, the first Tal Mitnick was jailed in December and, um, and, and Ben Arad became the third this week. Sophia sat between the two of them and, and, and was the second to be jailed. And Sophia joins me now. Sophia, thank you for your time this morning. To, to begin with the obvious question, why did you refuse to serve in the IDF? Um, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Hello. Um, I have made the decision to refuse to join the IDF before the war. I've made that decision a few years ago. Because for me, uh, the occupation and the uh, constant uh, discrimination and oppression against the Palestinian people that the IDF uh, enacts, uh, both in Gaza and in the West Bank, uh, were and are still enough uh, to refuse and to try and raise a voice uh, against those kind of actions. Uh, and since October 7th and since the war started, I've only became more sure of it. And it only became uh, more important for me uh, to make that decision. And that decision uh, is both a resistance for myself and uh, a resistance against those violent actions, but also to raise a voice and to try and reach Israeli society and young people in Israeli society and to show them that this is an option and to try and promote uh, a voice of peace uh, where it isn't being held. Have you known then since your, your, you, you first arrived at this conviction that it would eventually end in you being jailed? Yes, I knew that that was the most likely uh, result of that kind of decision. Uh, and I've made my peace with it uh, a long time ago. And now that it is here, uh, I'm dealing with it uh, one day at a time. What was your imprisonment like? Uh, what was your experience in jail? Um, I've been in prison two times uh, until now for 40 days. Uh, and it's a very interesting uh, a very interesting experience. Uh, you meet people that you won't meet, uh, I, that I personally wouldn't meet anywhere else and have conversations that I wouldn't have anywhere else. Uh, and it also uh, is making it even more apparent how uh, this war is hurting uh, the Israeli society and Israeli people, uh, the way that deserters are being punished way more harshly uh, now uh, because Prison is mostly filled with deserters. Really? Uh, that deserted for economic or uh, medical or family reasons and were unable to go to the army or continue serving in the army and are now being sentenced for way longer than they were before the war. And having conversations with those kind of people and seeing the way that the army is not only inhumane to Palestinians, but also inhumane to its own soldiers. And that this system needs uh, a change from the root. So and the... This the, These kind of policies need a change. So the punishment is not proving an effective deterrent for you? No. I mean, the punishment uh, is meant to deter me, uh, but it is not because it's important for me and it's an important thing to do and it's the right thing to do. I, I, uh, I, I mentioned that you're one of three young Israelis, Israeli teenagers, to, to be jailed for refusing service since October the 7th. You, you'll forgive me for not knowing what the statistics are more generally, more broadly, but but if somebody listening to this was to conclude from that that your position is not popular among your generation or among your peers, would that be a fair conclusion? Very much so. My position was not popular before the war, and it is even less popular now since the war started. Uh, the Israeli society has always been extremely right-wing uh, and very militaristic. And since the war started and since October 7th, it has only been shifting more and more to the right. Uh, and especially uh, young people who are maybe only now just getting into politics. And this is the kind of situation that they are getting themselves into. Uh, and they are... I mean, they feel that being a soldier is an honor, that they are uh, protecting their country, that they are doing something that is just. Uh, and I mean, the Israeli society doesn't accept uh, the decision that I make 
uh, and doesn't support it and I've gotten very harsh threats or comments I've gotten into fights uh, about this kind of decision so very much not a popular uh, not a popular stance to take in Israel, what, not before and especially not now. What, what, what do you think it is about your journey to this position, that, that why, why you have ended up at this conclusion, which is at odds with so much of so many of your, your own generation? What, what, what is it about your experiences? I, think, I mean, I think a lot of it comes to the education and the way you were brought up. I think that is true for anyone. Uh, and in any kind of family that they grow up in. I grew up in a non-Zionist family. Um, but also it very much depends on the mere action of asking questions. Uh, of When I get to the age where I, like everyone else, uh, every young person in Israel starts to think about their military service, that they, are, uh, that they have no choice to do, um, that is mandatory, and that when I got to the kind of age that I started to think about it, I also started to ask myself questions. If I go and serve in the army, what does my time mean? What does that service mean? Who does it help? What kind of cause am I actually serving if I go and invest that time? Um, and when I started asking those questions, I also got answers. And I, I realized that if I go and serve in the army, I don't serve the people around me. I serve a cycle of violence and I legitimize and normalize this cycle of violence. Uh, and it became, uh, it became clear to me that I have to not just not enlist, but I have to take action against it. Do you know what, where you would have been deployed if you had enlisted? Do you know what you would have been doing? Uh, generally so. Right. Uh, but I don't have any like specific, specific. role of mind. I know generally uh, in communications I was okay. supposed to be. I see. Um, and the decision to go public, I think you've just alluded to, not, not, not enlisting is one thing, but going very public with your decision not to enlist, I think is another. Is that correct? Yes, very much so. Uh, because not enlisting is something that way more people do than uh, you might think. The, the IDF exactly. don't publish the numbers, actually, but you you you, yeah. you, you made a conscious decision to go public, which is what leads to the imprisonment, I think. Yeah, I mean, there is there is a, a part, uh, there is the refusing to enlist, and there is the making it public and making a public statement about mm. it. Because refusing to enlist is in some ways for me, for my own uh, moral conscience, uh, that is important for me to stay uh, clean and to uh, be faithful to my beliefs. Uh, but making it public is an attempt to raise a voice for peace and to try and reach other people uh, with that kind of message and to convey it to as many people as they can. And how do you measure whether or not that's working, Sophia? Um, I mean, when I see a post, for example, uh, and I mean, if it's in Hebrew, most, the large majority of the comments will be violent and hateful, um, but if I see, if there's a thousand comments and 999 of them are that kind, but one of them says, that made me think, that made me question something, uh, then then it's worth it. Then it's working. Because so, one person uh, is still an impact. And I, I do what I can as one person, as an 18-year-old girl can. Uh, and I... If I manage to reach anyone, even slightly, then for me it's worth it. Two more questions. Thank you for your time. The first is: Do you? I, I, I hope this isn't a silly question. Do you feel? Do you, do you fear for your safety, even out, or perhaps especially outside prison? Uh, I don't feel for my safety. Uh, I for my like physical safety, but it does have like social repercussions. Uh, people who might recognize me, they might get violent. I haven't experienced that uh, yet. But in general, uh, most of the cost is social. Okay. Uh, because be, it's being a public person with a very uh, polarizing opinion inside Israel. 
And I, I, I sense that your position isn't going to change any time soon. So do you know when you would be likely to be returned to jail? Um, soon. I don't know. I mean, I don't know exactly when, but I will, uh, I will return there soon. I will refuse again. And I will not yield that kind of decision and that kind uh, of stance that I'm taking. Uh, what happens, Sophia? Sorry, my final question. What happens? The the people literally knock on your door and take you away? No, I go... You, you, uh, you, you present I, yourself. I at a, go there. Yeah, I go to the enlistment center uh, where they judge me uh, for any number of days and then I go back to prison to serve uh, those number of days, get out and do it again until uh, one of us gives up and it's not going to be me. Um, you mentioned social media messages uh, giving you hope and encouragement. I, I wonder if you'd let me read you a few that have just come in while you've been talking to me and then, then, then I will bid you farewell. Lucy writes, 18 years old, I feel hopeful for the future of Israel. Anne writes, such an impressive young woman. She is absolutely right about the need to ask questions, especially in times when emotions run high. Uh, the courage and conviction, writes Dave, of this person is inspiring. Andrew writes, what a courageous woman. Nargis says this Israeli woman is a real hero. God damn, writes uh, another texter, what a brave and principled woman. Huge respect to her. Mohammed writes, the world needs this young, peace-loving girl. I hope many are listening to her and um, and share her social network account. There's a big difference here. Please send Sophia our love and admiration, writes Brian. Um, the, the courage and conviction of this person is extraordinary. Um, I could go on. The young lady makes me, says Pat. The young lady, this young lady makes me want to be a better person. Thank you so much.